Hi, my name is Luke, and um, this video will be like a tour of my house. Um, before the tour starts, I want to talk a little bit about myself. Um, I am 13 years old, and when I started this build, I was 12 years old. It's been a little over a year and a half, um, probably a little less than that, since I started this build. Um, it is 10 feet long, five and a half feet wide. Um, the tallest point of the house is 10 feet tall. The lowest point is eight feet tall, and it is a total of 89 square feet. Um, the main reason I wanted to build a tiny house was I wanted something to do during the summer. Um, I was getting really bored during the summer, and I got really fascinated with tiny houses, um, watching YouTube videos and stuff like that. So I decided that if I worked towards it and um, made enough money, um, from cutting lawns that I would start to um, build a tiny house. Um, I learned a lot of it. Uh, I learned a lot like framing, wiring, um, like uh, simple framing techniques, um, a lot of di different skills I learned along the way, carpeting um, and stuff like that. Also a lot of woodworking skills, how to use saws, um, drills, impacts, like multiple tools and stuff like that. Um, when I was growing up, I uh, used a lot of tools like a drill, impact, saws. I was really familiar with because my dad had always used them um, and I would be exposed to the tools at a young age. So I knew how to use tools um, quite regularly and it wasn't very much of a learning curve. Um, framing the house was a learning curve for me. Um, my dad did a few remodeling projects and stuff like that. So he knew how to do it, but framing, I had no clue how to do it. Now that I'm done building, I think it's a very simple process, but when I started, I didn't know what to do. Um, I, um, I started a YouTube channel probably halfway through the build, and I started to document my process. Um, I wish I would have started it the day I started, but that's just not the way it worked out. Um, but I hope you're building another tiny house um, here in a couple years that I'll be actually living in um, full time, and it'll be in actually like a a lot bigger size tiny house than this one is. So I kind of made this tiny house as um, the learning tiny house. So um, I learned a lot of skills and um, I, by building this tiny house and I want to take those skills from this house and move them on to a bigger tiny home. So the number one way I made money um, was, was by mowing lawns. Um, I also did lots of bartering so I uh, there's my dad's friend lives up the street from me and he electrician and um, I cleaned his garage out so his new car can go in his um, garage and he helped um, pay and helped show me how to um, uh, wire the house so he um, helped me with the whole wiring process and so um, it's professionally wired. Another thing I did was I cut um, one of the um, adults that I knew from Scouts, I cut his lawn for um, his apartment building. He uh, helped. He he helped me put carpet in my loft. So he is a carpenter and he lays carpet and stuff like that. But he helped me with that part of the build. Um, a lot of people donated through a GoFundMe page, and that was a big help. Um, but most of it was paid by myself, and my parents did not help me pay for it. But my parents did help me. Um, with a lot of things like build. Some big things that happened um, during the build is I was featured um, on the front page of uh, the Telegraph Herald. Um, one of my school teachers saw my YouTube channels and he um, asked if I wanted to keep it small or I wanted everyone to know about it. And so I, I think he knew someone that worked in the TH and he um, let them know that what about what I was doing. And they picked it up and they wrote a whole story about me um, a couple days later they came to my school, they interviewed me, um, that day they came to my house, um, took photos, and that morning it was in the paper. So it was a very quick process and stuff like that. Also, um, I've gotten lots of emails from TV uh, producers and stuff like that. Some want to uh, start teen tiny house shows, um, and also I've been invited to speak at tiny house festivals. So. Um, lots of things are happening just from me building the tiny house and stuff like that and it's really cool that um, the city that I live in um, a lot of people know me just from um, the paper and stuff like that and they've also came and looked at the house. I hope to be holding a tiny house um, open house um, 
this month and uh, I hope that goes well because I want to invite everyone that donated and helped me through the bill. I'm not full time living in the house but I do spend a couple nights um, every other week sleeping in it. I do spend a lot of time in it. Um, I kind of call it my homework center, you know. Um, it is summer break right now, but when I do get homework, and I have done homework in here, and it's really nice. I also have a twin brother, um, so it helps that I have my own um, space. So my total cost, I'm finally done with the build, and the total cost of this build is I'm rounding it up to $1,500. Um, it's more like $1,200, but just to round up in case I forgot anything, um, I rounded it up to $1,500. Me and my dad really bonded through the process. Uh, me and him spent nights and days um, building it, and he really helped me. Um, at the time, he was working a full-time job, and he had cattle to do with. So um, he was really busy, but he made sure to spend time with me and coach me through the process of building a house. And I'm really grateful for a good dad, mom, and a good family. So now I think it's time. I've done a rough talking, and I think it's time for you guys to see the tour. Hope you guys enjoy. We're now on the outside of the house. Um, my house has uh, the front wall and the side wall are cedar shaked. Um, I didn't really do a pattern with them. Um, I just kind of threw them up there. Um, so on the outside, uh, there's a deck. I built this deck. It's fully reclaimed. Um, I spent zero uh, money on it. If you go on this side over here, I have some landscaping right here. These are two peony bushes. And then one of my subscribers um, thought I should have a flag on the outside of my house. So now I have a flag on the outside of my house. Um, this is a spruce tree, I think, that is not growing. Um, partially my fault. And then we have another flower right here. Um, this is where the electricity comes into my house. Um, There's kind of one that runs all the way back there. This is one of my side windows. Um, I reclaimed this window. And on the, else, on the back side of the house, I just have some more flowers, and we have the um, the back and this side wall over here is covered with vinyl. This is fully reclaimed vinyl siding from my grandma's house that she had left over. Oh, on the front of the house, we have a steel door. Um, this I got reclaimed. Um, one of my my uncle's friend had this, and so I painted it, and it's a steel door with the window. Um, I have another window that's reclaimed for free, and I spent $35 on that window right there. I have around a four foot, not even a four foot overhang, so I can you know, unlock the door when it's raining and I don't have to worry about rain getting on me. I have some flowers over here, and then I have a tomato plant that's growing some tomatoes right now. I built a mini fireplace right here, um, and then I have a hammock stand on the opposite side. Now that we're done with the outside tour, there's not much on the outside, but there's a lot inside, so let's make our ways inside. So right as you walk in to the uh, house, um, we have a carpet that kind of, you know, makes it feel a little more homey. Um, the floor is actually a plywood that I used some putty, leveled it out, and then painted it. Um, that was just because it's not air conditioning in here. And if uh, you ever, you know, since there's not air conditioning, heat and cold, and it, the floor would just not look good. So I decided to paint the floor, and it also um, made it cost less. Right as you walk into your right side, you have the kitchen. This is the kitchen countertop. Um, there's a big story on this. I'll have to watch my kitchen countertop fail. But I also have stor storage right underneath it where I keep some, you know, news articles um, and stuff like that. Um, right above it, we have uh, the countertop right here. This is a medicine cabinet, which I store some things like, um, you know, cups lighter, flashlight, some silverware, you know, seasoning, stuff like that. This tiling right here is actually sticky floor tile that I used, and it looks really nice. Above here, we have some storage where I keep some, you know, um, paper towels and some mini tripods. I get plumbing, as there is no plumbing in the house, so this right here stores water. The bowl comes down like this, and then you can have water to use. We also use biodegradable soap, so you can actually dump it in the lawn if you need to. What we store under here, um, what we store under here, my grandma made these curtains for me to cover everything up, but I store this electric Coleman fridge, and then, um, I have a hot plate for cooking, and then I have some pans under here with some food storage as well as like that, like pancake mix, some extra paper towels, and some canned food and things like that, just to have some food in here. 
Um, this right here is a pretty cool part of the house. Um, it's actually a piece of glass I reclaimed from our front door. We had to redo our front door glass because they were leaking. And so I took it and incorporated it into my storage slash ladder slash, you know, everything. This is a really big part of the house right here. Across that, on the other side, I have a speaker up here. That's just a portable speaker that I can listen to music on. And then I have some lights that light up when it's night out. And then there's also some more storage up here. All the photos on the wall um, are from South Carolina when we went on vacation. I took all these photos myself. And then as you keep moving on, we have a little power strip right here. Um, we also have this TV. Um, and this TV can pull out and, you know, swivel as much as it wants. And it can just go right back into the wall just like that. We have a little, you know, um, stand that I keep some tiny house books in. Since there is no screen to that window, we just have a setting screen, and that keeps all the bugs out. Um, we have a little footstool that you can bring out and put your feet on if you need to. My grandma made this. And then this for the couch. Um, this is actually uh, an ottoman, and we got it from Ikea. And then it lifts up, and you have storage underneath. Um, so that's really cool. We have some pillows, and this is a pretty cool part. So you pull a pipe out, hit that. And then this folds down, just like that. And now you have a full table. And then you can sit, eat. Um, there's actually, I saw a chair right behind the couch. And so you can have someone right there. Someone can sit on here. And this can fit two people. So if I needed to, I could see around one, two, three. I could sit four people at this table. But that would be really, really tight. And this folds up just like that. Put the pipe away. This is the loft. So this is the stairs that go up to the loft. Up here, I have a mattress. This is a foam mattress that my uh, dad uh, used leftover foam and made this. Um, it's actually really comfortable, and I personally think it's more comfortable than my own mattress in my bedroom. Um, up here, I have you know this is the this is the lower point. Up there is the highest point. Um, I have plenty of room. Um, I'm five, seven, something like that. Um, and I have a fan up here that, you know, gets a little hot up here. So I, you know, use it for circulation. Um, I have the safety things like fire extinguisher, um, uh, smoke alarm. And then I have a window, um, and with a screen up here, I have uh, storage. So I store like a deck of cards and then I also store some clothes and tissues for the winter um other than that for this house does not have ac and lots of people ask why do i have furnace filters because i don't have a furnace in here um these if you spritz them with water from a water um uh, sprayer and put them in a window when the wind comes through or you have a fan in front of it it blows cool air through the house so that's how they keep the house cool um during the summer and then during the winter i would keep it warm is i just use a little space heater and that's all i need Especially when I'm sleeping, I just put the space heater right here, and it blows hot air. And then during the middle of the night, I wake up, and I can turn it off or turn it on if I get too cold. Um, that works really well because all I have to heat is this really small area. And then when I wake up in the morning, I put the heater down there. I hope you guys like this video. Um, I know I haven't posted in two weeks. One week I was at Boy Scout summer camp, and the other week I think I was camping, and I was pretty busy. So... Um, I hope this video makes up for those two weeks lost. Um, we are, we have 392 subscribers, so we only need a few more to hit 400. So if you could, please like and share this video so we can hit 400. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, um, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.